Millennials are America's future, and often its favorite punchline. People say we're young, but the oldest millennials are nearing 40. People say we're dumb, but we're the most educated generation ever. And people say we're spoiled, but we're the first generation in American history who will be worse off financially than our parents. We're traveling across the country to find out how young Americans are surviving, and in some cases thriving. I'm Brad Hunt, and this is American Paycheck. For a hundred years, the city of Irwin has been known for two things, hanging Mary and being a rail yard town. Usually, if people know where Irwin is, it's because they know the story of the hanging of Mary. For a, a century, Mary was uh, a stigma. She was like something we didn't talk about. She really stomped a guy's head like a watermelon. Shot fireworks up Mary's ass and tried to kill her six different ways. We were the only town that had a crane strong enough to hang Mary. Mary was a circus elephant that uh, went wild, killed her trainer. Mary met her demise in the rail yard of Irwin. But in 2015, everything changed. Well, people in Irwin are still reeling tonight after a huge hit to that local economy. Oh, yeah. On Thursday, CSX said it would cut about 300 jobs by reducing operations. And tonight, we now know just how many people in the town of Irwin will be impacted. Yeah, my grandpa, he worked here probably close to 20 years. Um, he started out in the, the shop car working there, and then was a conductor, and then moved up to engineer. Then he got laid off. What did this do to the city when it shut down? It scared everybody. You know, it, was a, it was a huge, you know, people were freaking out. You know, they didn't know, you know, what was next, you know, what were their lives going to be turned into. So you had a lot of people just, you know, rip their roots up and just pack their, pack their bags, and, you know, next week they got a for sale sign on their house. Is that where the rail yard the was? The rail yard. So this is where everyone used to work. Everybody worked in there. All the diesel engines got fixed. They switched the trains around. A lot of history right here behind this depot. Along with those 400 jobs, our identity went with them. And our city was just shocked. We didn't know what to do. We were in mourning, really. Our doors hadn't been open for a month and CSX left. I know my business partner and I, we just looked at each other and we were like, oh my gosh, what have we done? What are we gonna do? We didn't have any money, but we had passion and we knew that if we could engage our government in a positive way that we thought we could get them on board. We had to come up with some way of keeping the, the young people here. And that's when we reached out to the professionals that had jobs here and asked them, what they would like to see happen to Irwin. And so we hosted this Vision 2020 event here in the Bramble, and we invited younger people. We wanted to be a group in action. The group of young professionals formed the RISE group. Jamie Rice was uh, elected as the first president, and it's been amazing what they've done with the town. RISE is an action word and it means rejuvenate, invest, support, and energize our community. We know that the heartbeat of every single community is your downtown, and when your downtown is strong, the rest of your community grows with it. The awesome thing is our state has actually given us a, a facade grant, $100,000 that we divided into three storefronts. Um, our third generation owned movie theater right across the street got a brand new marquee. We redid our downtown to make it more attractive to where people want to come, where people want to open up businesses. We're just making it more conducive uh, for the millenniums and the young people. And they started a, a farmer's market. We've had three or four festivals. We are creating a little event every single Tuesday through the summer. We're going to have music. We're going to have stuff for your kids. We're going to have food trucks. We have planned over 130 events and most of them have been focused downtown. And lo and behold, our vacancy rate is down 50% in our storefronts downtown, three and a half years later, which is amazing. Irwin is nestled along the Appalachian Trail, which brings in three million visitors each year. Brandy and Tyler started their business to cater to the region's flourishing tourist community. This is Irwin Outdoor Supply. This is where people come from the trail and they buy hiking supplies, camping supplies, and anything pretty much that you can do outdoors. 
One year ago, we were camping with the family in Hot Springs in North Carolina, and they have the smallest town, and it's just booming with people all the time. And we went into their little store, and we just saw how their, their little tiny town was just filled with all this activity going on. We were like, why couldn't we do something like this? And we brought it together. We actually got a building in October. I think this was one of the more needed things to actually happen in Irwin to make a lot of tourists come here. No, that's great. Doing this in a small town where you know everybody has been just a great experience. We had 1,600 people show up at our grand opening, which is unlike anything else they've seen in Irwin before. I think with the small city, there's more appreciation. There's just more gratitude, I think, in a smaller city and more support that people are just genuinely grateful. I think we saw probably 500 people from the Appalachian Trail and we had only been open for a month. Those people come from all over the world. So we've had people from Alaska, Switzerland, New Zealand. We had somebody come in from Lancaster the other day and said that they saw us on a YouTube guy's channel and came specifically here just to see us. Oh, really? It's been great. There's just so many new businesses coming. You have a lot of community support. They realize that we're trying to make a difference and change some things about Irwin. What are you eating? Holy burger. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Hey guys, how are we? Guys have any idea what we can get for you today? My name's Jason Howes. I run a food truck called Noli. I started doing competition barbecue about 10 years ago and there just wasn't any food trucks at all in this region, anywhere. When we first started running the truck, we were moving to every city in this region, just trying to build a following. We came back to Irwin full time, haven't left this county since January 1st of 2019. If I'm gonna be successful, I can't rely on a corporation. There's a lot of industry in this region that's disappeared. We've kind of been forced out to do our own thing. You know, we've definitely been put under the gun, but we don't we don't have the option, for instance, in Irwin to go work on the railroad. It's not there. It lets. Forever, we feel like the local media, everything coming out of Unicoi County was negative with the railroad shutting down or the story of the hanging of the elephant. And it's always been a black eye. The Rise Irwin Group, we uh, commissioned an artist to build the elephant, and um, we uh, just wanted to pay tribute to, to Mary and honor her, and it was a, a fun way to do it. One of our biggest successes with Rise is the Irwin Elephant Revival. Now the town's going through the memorial for the elephants and making all kinds of statues all over town, painting them, and when they first started doing it, they did a auction. Irwin's first ever Elephant Revival Festival honoring Mary the Elephant raised over $6,000 for the Elephant Sanctuary in Hohenwald as the town works to get rid of the negative stigma associated with Mary's killing 100 years ago. It was a real challenge to get it off the ground, but three and a half years later, we can see how far we've come and the public's perception of who Irwin was and is and who we are becoming. We honestly want to make people feel happy. We want people to live here. I can attest to that by what we have done through supporting the RISE group and bringing into town what the millennials want. They're going to be our future. I want to keep them interested. I want them to know that they do matter, that they are valuable, and that we need them. The millennials of Irwin were forced to deal with problems they didn't create. I mean, they didn't kill the elephant, and they weren't responsible for shutting down the rail yard. But through the ingenuity of Rise Irwin, this slice of small town America has gained a new life. Is Irwin the future for small town America? And will small business replace the loss of their rail yard? Only time will tell. But for now, all that matters is tomorrow's paycheck.